Thanks to Logitech and Discord for sending us to PAX East 2016. Check them out in the video description below. And welcome to PAX East 2016. My name is Nick Van Berkel. So usually Brandon would be doing these kind of gear bag videos, but guess what? Brandon's not here and I am. So I'm going to be doing this gear bag video today for you. So what we've got here for a backpack is the Dekine Reload Bag. This is a bag that I've had for a while from shooting sports and that kind of stuff. I bring it with me on trips because shooting show floor coverage is kind of like shooting sports because you're running around all over the place and you don't know where you're going to be. So let's take a look inside. We generally bring one of our other cameras like the A7S II when we go travel on a trip and shoot some show coverage because it's smaller and when you go through the airport they're not asking you like oh what's this thing it just looks like a photo camera but this year we're bringing the FS5 because we weren't able to bring one of our other cameras because Brandon's got them somewhere across the world who knows first things first I always bring my Canon 6D as like a backup camera we probably won't use it but it is a good camera in a pinch so it's decent to always have around and it doesn't take up that much space we generally bring like a 24 to 105 because it's a pretty good all-around workhorse lens and it's got image stabilization so when you're like four Red Bulls deep into show coverage and you're trying to get that still shot with your hands shaking all around. It does a pretty good job at keeping you steady so you don't look like an idiot when you're filming. The next lens we have here is a Tokina 11 to 16. It's super wide. You're not really supposed to use it on a full frame camera. I do anyways and use it at like 14 to 16 mil because I do what I want and it still looks okay, all right? Another little piece of gear I like for backup, just like the 6D, is an H4N. I always try and bring one just in case your audio solution screws up. Another piece of equipment that I like to bring on top of the camera is a little LED light, something that can just sit on there. This uses Sony batteries. It's a Yong No. I don't know how to pronounce that. Maybe Dennis does. It is his light. Um, it's pretty good for lighting B-roll in situations where you're going to have crappy lighting, which is like pretty much every booth. When you have one of these puppies, it just lights up whatever the hell you're trying to shoot. So you're not at like 12,000 ISO. You get that light on there, you're going to get those sick shots. It's going to be looking wicked. Well, we got a ton of battery banks here. Those are always handy in pretty much any situation. Some people like to have over-ear headphones. I like to bring IEMs or earbuds. These are like Klipsch S4i headphones for an iPhone. They do a pretty good job at replicating decent sound. It's enough for monitoring. And if you've got like over your headphones all the time, you might be blocking out some of that outside noise, which is great. But at the same time, you probably only got one free hand. And now you're, hand you're trying to like get stuff ready and put these headphones on. You're going to look like Dennis in the office with headphones all over his face. I have the Sennheiser Momentum Wireless. I honestly just bring them for the airplane. I don't like to hear anyone else on the airplane. So I bring these puppies on. I turn them on noise cancelling and then I try and fall asleep. Now I know this is a tech channel and you guys want to see the latest and greatest gear and all those sort of electronic gadgets and gizmos and whatnot. But one of the biggest things that I always have to have in my camera bag is snacks. Because you're going to be grumpy, man. You're going to be out there on the show floor. You're not going to eat for like who knows how long, six, seven hours. You got to have some clip bars in there so you don't get into a bad mood. You don't get that low blood sugar. This is something I don't usually bring in my camera bag per se, but they were giving them away at the Twitch booth. And I figured, hey, that's actually a pretty good idea to have with you at all times little old spice, a little deodorant so you're not stinking up the place because you're going to be running around. There's a good chance you're probably going to stink. Another thing that's essential, you got to have your Kingston card reader. Uh, who knows when you need to offload footage if you max out a card or something like that. I also like to keep a little, a little box, a little case, a little waterproof sealed Brandon Lee case for carrying your cards. I usually end up putting them in my pocket, which is not a good practice. If you go out shooting all day and then you end up losing a card or breaking it, that's a waste of time for you, for your boss. For your mom for everyone honestly we brought a sennheiser wireless mic kit this is the avx kit that we've done a review on in one of our past videos audio is obviously incredibly important because just like right now it's incredibly loud and if we didn't have a hammer type mic like this one you probably wouldn't hear me at all it'd be booming and echoing and all that kind of junk but that's pretty much it for all the camera stuff luke's going to tell you about some computer stuff in terms of computers, we have three different like high-end gaming computers. Starting with Dennis's computer, which is kind of the most badass. That has an i7-6700K, yes, a desktop series CPU, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and an NVIDIA GTX 980 Desktop Edition. This is a laptop that has a desktop processor and a desktop graphics card, which is actually kind of ludicrous. We have a video on it up here. It has a crazy model name, so yeah, just click on that. It's a Sager. Burkle's is almost equally as insane, but just not quite so much in the CPU department. He has an MSI GT72S, it has an i7-6920HQ, 32 gigabytes of RAM, and another NVIDIA 980 GTX desktop edition card. So it's a mobile processor and a desktop graphics card. Then myself, mine's kinda just for gaming, not actually for editing, so 
cool regardless. I got to borrow a gaming laptop from work. That was nice. Anyways, mine has an i7-4710HQ, 24 gigs of RAM, and an NVIDIA 980M. I guess I don't get a desktop 980 for gaming. Whatever. The reason why we're here in the BYOC section with these laptops is so that we could shoot on the floor and then send someone back to the BYOC area with an SD card and have them editing in minutes instead of bringing everything back to the hotel at the end of the day and then editing there. That made it much more efficient and we were able to edit things at the show much more on time. Brandon isn't staying up till 4 a.m. in the morning. Yeah, it's just a lot easier to do it this way. Anyways guys, I massively prefer this style. I like it when people are able to come back and edit during the show. It's nice having a base of operations for us to work out of that isn't like a booth that costs us thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. That being said, the Nerd Fusion booth was pretty cool. Shout out to Sevenus there. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about this video in the comments down below. Thanks for watching all of our PAX East 2016 content. This is it. We got to pack and go home. So I'll see you guys later. Thank you to Logitech for sending us here this year. Check out all their keyboards and mice and headsets and racing wheels and whatnot in the video description down below. And also thank you to Discord, which Dennis might actually be able to see the little thing up there. I'm not sure if you can see it from here. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. They're awesome. They have free voice and text chat servers with tons of different customizability options. You can have friends list, it's free, like I already said. It's, there's DDoS protection, and there's cat gifts and lemmy faces. I don't know, they're cool. Check them out in the video description down below as well. See you guys next time.